Dios. Nice. Here, out on the road, everything seems so normal. Same moon, same night sky. After an hour of driving, it's easy to forget all about that dead world back there. How could Lambert have survived, though? If he came from the future, how did he not die along with everybody else? I just saw his body in the morgue. Now I'm driving out to talk to him alive. How does that work? Do you just leave a copy of yourself every time you use the box? Is that it? Are there copies of me all over the place now? What if he's not there? What if I changed something and he's not alive at all? Maybe all of this has been completely pointless. Maybe there's nothing I can do after all. Maybe these will be my last days, along with everybody else's. Ugh, the thought ties my stomach in knots. No, I better just not think about it and carry on. Did I bring enough gas? God, I hope I brought enough gas. Nice. When I was a little lad, and so my mother told me, Way haul away, we'll haul away, Joe.
Hmm.
Stop right there! Whoa, whoa, wait! Uh, Mr. Lambert, sir, it's me, Joe! I don't know you. What are you doing in my house? Y you you sent me here, remember? I've done no such thing. For an intruder, you're not very bright, you know that? For all the commotion you caused getting in here, you might as well have brought a bulldozer. Now. You have exactly five seconds to explain what you're doing here. Or so help me God, I'm pulling this trigger and sending you on your way. Five. I, I, I was sent here. Four. Why you? Three. You told me to find you, to warn you about the end of the world. Two. Y you were old, uh, with white hair, and you got shot. Oh God, please don't shoot me, Mr. Lambert. This! This! You gave me this! Uh, it's an inter-something, uh, chrono. It's a time machine. I... gave you that? Yes! I've never seen anything like it. But on the back, that's my family's signet. I made this? It's simply magnificent. I gave this to you? Why? Who are you? Name's Joe, sir. I, I'm, I'm just a janitor at the Archon building. I found you in a room with a big, round door in the basement labs this morning, and you, you were dying. You said you'd come from 40 years in the future to stop the end of the world. I, I, I guess I was the only one around, so you gave me this and told me to find you and tell you all this, and... I've been there. The future, I mean. A bunch of times. And you were right, Mr. Lambert. Everyone's gone. My God, so it did come to pass. They really did it, those greedy goddamn bastards. I told them this would happen. Wait, I was dying? How? You said you'd been shot. I had to actually find you at the, uh, uh the morgue to get this address. Shot? By whom? No, wait. Don't say anything else. You succeeded in finding me, which means anything you tell me from this point on could alter the course of action that brought you to my doorstep. The less I know, the better. So, you've seen the future. What did you see? It's like a bad dream, sir. Everyone's gone. Buildings are coming apart. It's all just... quiet. What happened, Mr. Lambert? It is Doctor. Doctor Lambert. And considering all the effort you just went through to find me, not to mention bearing witness to the horrific outcome of the biggest breakthrough in the history of science, I suppose I owe you some kind of explanation. I was 24 when I got hired by Archon, or Athena as it was called back then. Athena was one of the many weapons R&D companies formed during the Second World War. 
Unlike other R&D companies that had retooled themselves to pursue peacetime activities after the war, Athena had made enough money to continue chasing the next big thing in defense technologies. They were betting the farm on post-war Soviet expansion raising the level of government paranoia to create a lucrative market for esoteric weapons research. I'd say they made the right bet. Still a theoretical physicist at MIT, my thesis on the possibility of time travel via dimensional membranes got published shortly after I was hired in 1961. Company heads were so impressed, they gave me a team and a budget. Development exceeded even my own expectations. And after only six years, we had the first primitive version of the time machine up and running. Our first successful trials involved sending simple objects into the future with a timed return. But with Archon running out of money, that was all the company bigwigs needed to secure a big fat contract with the Department of Defense. Apparently, we had sold them on the idea that the technology could be used to go back in time and strangle communism in its cradle. The reality, of course, was that it couldn't. Due to the laws of causality, you can't travel back in time beyond the point where time travel was invented. And sooner or later, we had to explain that to our benefactors. When they started pushing for progress reports, Archon management had to come clean, but instead chose to ease government concerns by claiming the technology could be used to bring back advanced weapons from the future. But this, too, was a lie. At this point, we'd already had our first of many human trials, and we knew there would be no weapons. In fact, our results were as terrifying as they were baffling. Time pilots returned frenzied and confused, raving about empty streets and human remains. At first, we assumed the city had suffered a Soviet attack in the near future and had been evacuated as a result. But as we pushed on further, the terrible reality became clear. Time pilots started returning fatally ill, dying within a day or two from painful convulsions. Some never returned. We lost several pilots, machine prototypes, and other equipment. When the first contamination erupted in the lab, we were completely unprepared, losing three lab technicians to what we later identified as an incredibly aggressive airborne virus. Although we weren't equipped to handle biohazards of this magnitude, management insisted we contain and study it. To keep our pilots and the virus alive long enough to study, we co-opted experimental cryotechnology from another project, Lazarus, and established a makeshift virus lab. Once again, the bigwigs managed to spin our setbacks into a success story for the Department of Defense now claiming that the virus could be cultivated for use as a biological weapon. The team threatened to resign, but outrage was swiftly quenched by promises of massive salary increases and stock options. I didn't take the bribe. I'd witnessed the lethal efficiency of the virus firsthand. I knew there was only one way this was going to end, so I handed in my resignation and set up shop out here. For over a year I've been working to recreate the technology to bring me back in time and prevent mankind's extinction from ever happening. And now you're here, the harbinger of doom at my doorstep, wearing a boiler suit. Who could have imagined the Judgment Day? would begin like any other Monday in May. 
In any case, unfathomable as it may be that you were able to bring this information to me, knowing is only half the battle. Preventing the outbreak will require more than just your tenacity. Me? Wait, what? Yes, I'm afraid I must rely on you one more time. You must go back to Archon and prevent the outbreak. No, no, that that's, uh, I mean, I'm really honored and everything, but... Believe me, you're the last person in the world I want to entrust with this, and I mean that quite literally. But by this time tomorrow, the entire city will have succumbed to chaos, panic, and death. You're here now, and you're all I've got. Wait, but what about you? Can't you fix this, Doc? Don't you have a plan? I can't go myself, because that would break the law of causality. The only reason you are here to warn me now is because I was there to send you. And the only reason I was there to send you is because I was able to bring my work to fruition here. But... We've no time to waste. It's the only way. You told me you found me this morning, correct? Yes, but... That means I failed to stop it, and the outbreak has already begun. The time pilot for today's trials must have brought the virus back from the future, which then somehow got out of the containment chamber and spread. That pilot is patient zero. I need you to destroy the supercomputer system controlling the time machine. All the research data is stored there too. You must destroy it before the time machine departs. I'm reconfiguring your device to send you back one day earlier. This should allow you ample time to return to Archon and get inside. On the other shore from here, about 500 yards down the road, is a rest stop. You'll find a van there, fueled and ready to go. Oh, I already have a ride. Which won't be there yesterday, you ninny. Now stop interrupting me. One last thing, and I need you to listen carefully because this is very, very important. Make sure you do not meet the earlier version of you. Why? What will happen? No one knows for sure. It's one of the conundrums not yet accounted for. There are theories, of course. None of them pleasant. Now, let's get you ready. How did I get myself into this? I nearly got killed trying to reach Dr. Lambert thinking he had a plan. And it turns out it's me. I'm the plan. At least I don't have to walk back. This van's not as cool as the ambulance, but it has its charm. And it sure was nice of him to pack me lunch. I wish he'd pack me a can opener for the beans, though. And some gas for the Bunsen burner. But I'm sure I'll think of something. I've got several hours of driving ahead of me, after all. It'll be almost morning before I get to Archon. I just hope I have enough time. <laughs>